This is topic six of managing a web server. Um, and this topic is about logging and also HTTP status codes. So this is a fairly straightforward topic, just some background theory into web servers. So uh, first of all, logging. So the etymology behind logging, uh, why is logging called logging? Um, you see, I've got a couple of pictures there and those people are um, logging. So let's just move down to the etymology of logging. So a log is actually a record of observations and it was originally a record of a ship's progress. Um, so what we had was, uh, we had some, some various uh, items on a ship and they had a log and the log had a rope tied to it and the rope had various knots in it. And what they used to do was throw the, throw the log overboard and then as the knots passed till, till the rope got all the way to the end, um, they would be able to measure how many knots they were traveling at. So that's where that, that speed comes from, the knots. And uh, the log book was where they wrote the record in. So that's where the log comes from, okay? And it actually comes from throwing a log out of a ship. So Apache actually maintains two logs, okay? Uh, two kinds. The first one is the error log. And the error log is stored in slash var slash log slash error dot log and the access log is stored in var log access dot log now error and access the access log is probably the more used of the two the more common to look at and it contains information about requests coming into the web server and this information can include what pages people are viewing, the success status of requests, and how long the request took to respond. The error log just contains errors. Okay, so easy to remember. So by default, Apache logs um, each incoming request to the access log. And if you open up the access log in a text editor, it will look something like this. Okay. So we have the IP address, that's of the um, host accessing the web server. We have the timestamp. Then we have the HTTP request, okay, get. Then we have the HTTP status code. And then we have um, some other number. I think this might be bytes here. Okay, now the point is these are all fields Okay, these fields, and these, this is displayed in a format that's called common log format. Okay, so common log format um, is, is the log format that I showed you there, laid out like this. Um, now, reading from left to right, the format contains information, okay, and that information actually has specific fields and those fields can be turned on or off okay now um this here is called a log format directive okay now these little percentage and then characters are an indication to the web server as to what to put into the log and this is a nickname for the log at the end so I don't know them all, but I know that percentage T means timestamp, percentage H means host. I think that's a referrer URL, although I'm not entirely sure. So basically, these are called format modifiers, all right? And if we include these in our log format definition, these are what Apache will log to the access log. So here is an example of a more detailed log, okay? This has got um, H, L, U, T, R, S. I think R is referrer, although I'm not entirely sure. Um, percentage referrer is likely referrer. And uh, then we've got user agent as well. So user agent is the browser that the user is using. So if we created a detailed log format like this, this would tell the web server to store 
all of these values in the log. Okay, now I've put a link here to some more um, information and this should uh, actually give us, um, let me just open the link in new tab. This should give us some more. So there's, there's um, a big list that you should be able to see here. The um, local IP address, size of response in bytes, size of response in bytes, excluding HTTP headers, time taken to serve the request, file name, remote host name, request protocol. So there's all sorts of format modifiers, all right, that you can add into that. And this just tells Apache what to log each time um, someone accesses the log. Now, we could define a custom log, okay? And by doing that, what we do is we write the word log format into the Apache config file, and then we write what format modifiers we want in the log format, and then we give it a name after here, okay? For example, my log format. All right, it's a good name for a log format. It's quite descriptive. Now, how do we tell Apache to use my log format? It won't just use it by default. What we have to do is we have to go into our virtual host directive. And inside the virtual host directive, we have, um, so we got our document root, server name, our IP address and port information up here. Then we also have custom log and error log, right? And what you can provide, is it just me or did the internet just go down? No, no, I think I just clicked on, I think I actually treated that custom log as a URL. Okay, so, right, here we go. So what you can provide is you can provide a path to the log file and a name you want to give it and you, you then you say after it the nickname my log format will say will tell apache to use this format all right my log format so you specify where you want the log to go okay a path to it and you put the format after it if you don't put the format it will just use the default format okay so if you don't put the format nickname it'll just it'll just default back there okay so what i've put here is a new log with a format of my log format will now be available in var log apache 2 and it will be called example access dot log okay so um that's how we create a custom apache log and um, the next part is just a short bit of theory about http so http and um, status codes sometimes you might have heard of a well, the most common one you'll have heard of is probably 404 or 400, not found. So one, anything one, 100, 101 means is informational, okay? Anything with a two is success. So if a client accesses a web page and it returns 200, that means a successful access request, okay? The HTTP status code for success is 200. Anything else that's successful is 200 and something, okay? Accepted 203, all right? Um, okay, 300 is redirect. Now, generally, we only you really hear about a 301 redirect or a 302 uh, redirect. I think it's 302. I think it's 301 or 302. Maybe it's 301 or 307. Anyway, the 301 redirect will return a status code and redirect you to a different web page. Okay, so that's the 300 there. Um, then we have 400, which has got the most different options in it. And 400 is an error. So 400 alone is a bad request. 401 is unauthorized. 402, payment required. 403, forbidden and so on, okay? Um, some interesting ones you can look into one day. There's one called I'm a Teapot 418. Um, that's worth looking up. That's to do with this coffee pot protocol. Um, feel free to look up HTTP 418 in your own time. So anything 400 is an error, right? 
anything 500 is a server error. So up here, this is client error. 500 is a server error. So 500 internal server error, 502 bad gateway. Okay, that's what this means. So these are HTTP status codes. So finally, the logs aren't just for administrators. So what you can actually do with the Apache access log is you can, um, you can add a lot of format identifiers to an Apache access log and you can provide um, users in your organization with extra information. So here's some examples of, of what we can create with an access log, we can create a visualization dashboard. Now, let's say we add to the access log things like IP geolocation. If a lot of your customers were coming from America, you would be able to um, you'd be able to get that information. Let's say you knew that a lot of your customers were from Australia, for example, but that was during the night, and um, this would this would be kind of obvious from the log. Other things might be browser user agents. So if you notice that one particular area of the website's most commonly visited by Windows users or most commonly visited by Android users, you might want to see, is that optimized properly for th that size of browser? Is it responsive? Um, other things would be busy times, you know, um, status responses. Are we getting a lot of 400 errors, 500 errors? Um, 200 errors. You can also tell how many hits we're getting on the website, when we're getting them. So all of these things can be derived from the log and we can put this into a visualization or a report. So there's another example of a real-time dashboard based on a web server log. This is the errors here, HTTP errors, um, and, and also giving you an overview of how busy the uh, web server actually is. So th those are the two topics today. Um, I'm gonna head over to VMware now and hopefully my machine will start. Uh, here we go. Go play. Um, I copied it. Now, thankfully, uh, the web server won't be as sensitive as the um, as the Windows server, I hope. So it should just start. I'm gonna guess it's not gonna give me any big problems. So let me just get this web server started up. Uh, okay, there we go, straight in. And VMware Tools is working as well. Right, so let's go into the log directory and have a look. So we do cd to slash var. Okay, var is where variable files go. Okay, so files that change. So if I do ls, we can see we've got caches, um, opts, runs, spools, temp is in there. If we go into, okay, log, this is where the system logs are kept. And we do ls, we'll see, look, there's lots of logs in there, including VMware is keeping logs in here as well. So if we go into, um, Apache 2, that's where the Apache 2 logs are stored. Apt has got its own logs in there. Um, the GNOME Display Manager has got its own logs in there. So uh, syslogs in here. Um, a common one is messages, and those are just general system messages. So if I cat messages, uh, oh, permission denied, I'll just become root. Okay, cat messages. Okay, these are the latest um, system messages that are running. This is stuff that's going on in the background that we don't know. So sometimes if you want to check a server, you would look in varlog messages, but we're gonna look in varlog Apache 2. And we can see there's the two logs, the access log and the error log. Okay, so we cat the access log. You can see that this web server has only actually been accessed three or four, maybe five times. Now. Let's see if the server's running. So systemctl status, um, systemctl status, Apache 2. Okay, Apache's running. So let's do a word count 
number of lines on there. All right. Okay, so this, the, the web server has been accessed four times. All right, and we've just checked that the web server is running. So if I were to access the web server now over here by doing 127.0.0.1, okay. Hello everyone, I'm a web page. If we check the access log now, oh, we'll see it's been accessed seven times because I pressed F5 rapidly. So if I press F5 a few times here and then go this, there you go, 29 times. Now if we have a look in the, the access log, okay, you'll see there's um, all the information that we're getting. Now, each of these is a line in itself. So if we just pull out the first line, okay? We should see we've got things like the referrer IP, which is just an IPv6 loopback, the timestamp. Uh, for some reason, it thinks it's the 13th of October. That's probably because that was the last time I had this machine turned on. Um, it's a GET request, HTTP. The status code is 200. The referrer agent is Mozilla. Um, it's coming from a Linux operating system and the browser is Firefox. So we're getting all of that from the Apache access log. Now the error log, okay, just has stuff like, I remember when I was setting up the SSL certificates, look, there's errors about open SSL running in there. Right, so those are the two um, main log files. Now, if I wanted to make a change to the log that was being used, okay, or if I wanted to add a new log format, I could actually go to um, Etsy, Apache 2, um, and the main global config file is apache2.conf, okay? Now, I don't want the CD there because it's a file. Let's, let's just open it with Vim, all right? Now, somewhere in here, right, if I click the slash key going this way, this will allow me to search, right? And I'm gonna search for log format. I'm not even gonna type log. Okay, now it jumps me automatically to line 212. Now, these log formats here are already made up, all right? So if I was to choose, um, if I could create a new log format now, right? Okay, so log format, okay? And in here I could say, I only want you to log the host, IP, and the time, okay? And then I could give that log format a nickname of, let's say, um, useless log. Okay, this is in the global configuration file I'm doing this. So let's save that, right? Useless underscore log. Let's restart Apache. Restart Apache 2. Oh, oh not this again. Tell me I know the passphrase. Uh, no, I wonder what I've put as the pass phase. Uh, EC maybe? No. Well, hopefully everyone will. Let's try Edinburgh College. Ah, it was Edinburgh College. Okay, cool. So that's just a little, that, that never used to happen. That's a new thing, right? So um, we've created a new log format called useless log. And if we cut out the, um, the uh, apache2.conf file, um, cat, uh, just ls. Oh, we're still in, okay, so let's cat the slash etsy apache2, apache2, apache2.conf file, and let's search in that file for something that starts with, okay, log format, okay, um, try that. There we go. So that's only returning the lines that have log format in it using that grep search there, okay? Grep just stands for um, global regular expression patterns, okay? This type of grep search, the, the caret symbol there in quotes just means give me everything that, with a line that starts with log format, okay? And what we can actually do to, to strip out the very end of that is we could do a tail minus one, all right? And that, there's our useless log there log format inside the Apache server. Now, if we were to CD to our um, var, 
dub dub dub, okay, and type ls, we should have an HTML directory. And in there, okay, is our index file. Now, what we want to look at now, okay, is our um, Apache 2 sites, um, never sites enabled, only sites available, okay? So we have our triple zero default.conf, default ssl.conf, and default ssl.conf backup. Now, I believe that the site we're using at the moment is the default ssl.conf. So let me have a look in there, okay? Now, what we've got here, all right, inside the virtual host directive is we have specified at the moment the custom log is combined, okay? Why don't we change that to refer to, okay, the useless underscore log? And let's give it a different name as well, access underscore useless, all right? Let's save that, okay. Now, let's restart the Apache server again. So let's do, put the passphrase in. Thank goodness I remembered that. Okay, now, if we go back to our default log directory, okay, um, see, a new file has appeared that wasn't there before. What is this? Access underscore useless dot log. So let's have a look in there. Access underscore useless dot log. It's blank. There's nothing in there, okay? Absolutely nothing in there. So what happens when we refresh? Let's go HTTPS 127.0.0.1. Okay. It's asking me to accept the certificate that we created a couple of weeks ago. Let's confirm. All right, and let's just refresh this a few times, all right? Now, what happens if we have a look in useless.log? Ah, look at this, right? We now have customized entries in our useless.log of the host and the timestamp. And look, the timestamp seems to have corrected itself, which is good. So what we've done there is we've specified a custom log and specified the format identifiers for it. And the steps that we did, or the steps that we went through to do that, I can list these out for you, um, just so you can remember it quickly, are, okay, step one, we edited um, apache2.conf, and we created a new log format directive, okay, specifying the little uh, log form, specifying a nickname and some format identifiers. Step two, um, after restarting, we edited the um, virtual host directive and added um, a reference to the new log format. Okay, sorry about the spelling of after there, after the French spelling. Okay, after, after restarting, we edited the virtual host directory and added a reference to the log format. And there it is there. Okay, so what are we gonna do in the lab today? Right, lab six, okay, for managing a web server is available uh, on the Moodle now. And in this lab, we're gonna have a look at the access log, cat it out, okay? Use word count to show how many characters. Have a look at the error log. Um, then we're gonna create a custom log, okay? Um, for a website called example.com. And then we will restart Apache. And then we're gonna create our own log called magic, the magic log. First of all, the magic log will just have a short log format, okay, like this. Then we're gonna create a very, very detailed log there. And that is lab six for managing a web server.